Greetings, I'm Jonathan, Polygon Flow's Community Director for Dash, our next-gen Unreal Engine plugin. In this video, I'll be covering our material editing tool, which has been significantly improved in Dash 1.4. So let's start by opening Dash. Open the content browser and then navigate to an existing material you'd like to work with, then drag and drop it into the environment. With the terrain selected, the Dash panel has an art palette icon that you'll select to open the material editor. Before we proceed, it is important to note that the new material editor system only works with Megascans and Polyhaven assets at the moment. Future builds of Dash should allow you to work with any asset that you own in this system. Expand the window and you'll see a whole suite of tools to work with. With the material editor, you can adjust the albedo hue, the albedo saturation, the albedo brightness, and contrast. You can also adjust the roughness of the material in addition to changing the normal map's intensity via a slider. You can also adjust the texture tiling from the material editor too. Before displacement can be used, you need to select the mesh that you want to displace. Then type nanite in dash and select the command actor switch nanite to enable nanite and displacement for that mesh. Then you can begin to play with the displacement values. Adjusting these values can cause shadow artifacts on the mesh, which can usually be fixed by slightly moving the mesh in the world. Unreal 5's Nanite system works great with real-time displacement and allows you to create much more interesting worlds using Dash. You can use the material editor with Megascans or Polyhaven objects as well. And if you're the tinkering type, you can apply one of the material instances to one of your custom objects that you've imported into Unreal. Replace textures and get Dash's material editor to work with those too. And if you don't like these settings or you just want to work with default settings again, you can use the material editor options menu to reset all the values to default. Working with Dash is fully procedural, so you can adjust anything on the fly without worrying about it. In the latest versions of Dash, you can now break up textures by adding dirt to the material. This has its own set of parameters that we can adjust to fine-tune the material that we're using. From the intensity of the dirt, to the albedo hue, overall dirt color saturation, brightness, and tiling too. This allows you to customize the materials that you're working with. And in the future, even more options will be available here to improve the procedural texturing. Let's use the content browser to drag some additional assets into the scene. Dash now has a pretty robust snow system too. You can enable snow texturing by opening the snow rollout and clicking Enable Snow, which allows you to adjust the sharpness of the textured snow, the angular slopes the snow will collect on, the reflectivity of the snow by adjusting its roughness, the chunkiness of the snow by adjusting the normal map, and the tiling of the snow texture. As with dirt, even more options will be available with the snow system as it continues to be improved and refined. You can also use the snow and dirt systems with the rest of the material editor so you can change the surface properties of the object to make snow more visible. Some assets are too bright for snow and dirt to show up well, so you can fix this by adjusting the material brightness and contrast, then play around with the coverage of the snow on the object now that the snow is much easier to see. Remember earlier when I said that Dash is fully procedural? Let's try out the snow system on a dash terrain by giving it a decent amount of subdivisions and surface variation for the snow system to work. Once I'm happy with the terrain, I can add the grass texture from earlier and enable snow on it. Then I can play with the settings and see what I get. You can also adjust the terrain itself and the material will auto-populate the changes based on the surface topology of the terrain. Pretty neat, right? Having this fully procedural workflow in Unreal Engine makes creating environments super easy. Now let's move on to water. Type water in dash and select create water to automatically create a plane with a pre-applied dash water material. The plane dash creates isn't big enough for my scene, so I'm going to rescale it to make it fit the environment that I've built. 
For a plane this large, without modified UVs, the default tiling range needs to be adjusted. Sliding the tiling value around will change the values up to a point, but for anything higher than 100, you need to manually type in values to extend the sliding range. I'll type in a large value and then adjust it until I'm happy with it. The depth of the water determines how murky the water appears from a distance. The higher up the water plane is above an object, the murkier the object will appear as the depth value is increased. Distortion uses the normal map to create the optical illusion of waves breaking up the refracted object under the water. The stronger the value is, the more visible the refraction becomes. Underlying hue and saturation changes the color of the objects and terrain below the water's surface. Both of these sliders work in concert to produce a subtle but noticeable color absorption pattern, which can resemble real-world oceans or something completely different entirely. You can also change the intensity of the waves on the surface of the water by adjusting the normal slider. You can also use the normal hue and saturation sliders to get a wildly different water effect, or dial in the tropical green that I'm looking for here. Water isn't just for larger environments either. You can place a plane within a crate to have a bucket of water to work with. And if you adjust the material parameters, you can make it into a bucket of blood, or perhaps radioactive sludge. The only limit is your imagination. Thanks for watching another tutorial on how to work with Polygon Flow Dash. This was Jonathan, Polygon Flow's community director, and let us know what you think in the comments. We'll see you next time.